All right, welcome back to Misery Point Radio. Good to have you here. And today, I have yet another super awesome show in store for you guys. A little history lesson today. About a year and a half ago, I launched a little show. You might have heard of it. It's called On the Edge with Mike Peacock. And my very first guest that I had on that show, and I should say guests, uh, plural, an amazing band, some great friends of mine, called the Fibs. And I've said this numerous times that the Fibs are one of my favorite bands of all time, not just because they're my friends, but because they are, in fact, absolutely fucking epic. Love me some fibs. So, now that I am done circle drinking the fibs for you, we're going to bring them back. Well, I did bring them back. Same studio, same host, different show, and again, marking the first time on this show that I had the privilege and the ability to have an entire band perform live here in studio. And Dale even surprising me by bringing his fucking drum set, (laughs) which I did not expect. But we had fun. Although there were some technical issues. Shane was stuck in the vortex for a while. Pablo's recording was super loud. Then all of a sudden Pablo's recording disappeared. So I don't know what happened. We're going to say poltergeists. So I assure you, Pablo is here. He just disappeared into the background. So uh, check out the interview with the Fibs. And then at the end, check out the awesome performance. All right. So welcome to Misery Point Radio. Pablo, Shane, Sean, Dale, otherwise known as the Fibs. Guys, welcome. Hi, Mike. Thank, thank you for you. having us. Howdy. Awesome. This is take two, by the way. <laughs> it feels like we just did 2.0. This. <laughs> this is not a canned conversation, I promise you. It's not. So uh, <laughs> uh, we had some technical difficulties and, and had to restart. This is the blooper reel. We'll call this the B-side. <laughs> yeah. Should go a lot better this time. Nice. Nice. side B so, for Sean. <laughs> except for Sean. Yeah. So uh, as we weren't saying just a few minutes ago, you guys have had uh, kind of a lot of stuff going on. And the thing that I wanted to talk about first was that new album that finally came out. And uh, what was the process? Why did that take so long to get here? Well, we're trying to get Pablo to play his parts right. Yeah. It just took a long time to... (laughs) He just doesn't listen. Yeah. No, um, we recorded that thing and had it complete mastered ready Almost to three go years ago in november we started recording it yeah so about two years ago it was done um but we ran into quite a bit of issues with the album art we had a 16 page book planned for it with front cover back cover all this fun stuff and it turned out to be a lot more money than we thought it was going to be just to do the art so it took us a long time to get the money for the art and when we sent it off to have it done Two different companies, yeah. Two different yeah. companies dropped the ball, and we sat oh. on that for about eight months. One of the guys died. Yeah, that wasn't yeah. a good deal. Sad so story. it's just kind of been jinx. So we started putting it out in uh, paper sleeves. Okay. White paper sleeves, too old for success. CD. Buy it, 50 bucks a pop. <laughs> right. Uh, paper sleeve, another we'll 10 lick it for you. Well, I'm surprised that the arena book. tours didn't pay for the album covers. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're hard. Yeah, well, we've been trying to get into the <laughs> arena sports <laughs> bar and grill, but they don't take that. They won't let us. Yeah. We offered them the like 500 bucks, the and they still won't let us play there. Yeah. So back when you guys were on the On the Edge podcast back in June of 2017, uh, you had given me some of the music kind of in advance to check it out, and a lot of that stuff – like you said, had already been done. So here we are basically a year and a half later, and it's how long has it been out for now? Well, when we did we finally start started selling, selling it on that, on that tour to Eastern Washington? On our tour so in so July, June. July 5th and, was no, when June. we started the tour. Was it June? June? Wait, June. Shoot, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. But since yeah. then, we actually we re-recorded our uh, first demo EP and re-released it. At the autopsy yeah, so re- the coma. E- Yep. Oh, you redid the EP. We redid yeah. it. It's Three. called the Reap EP. So it's uh the Reap. The Reap. It's the Reap, got the yeah. original six the songs Reap. from the first 
EP and uh, Plus one, added bonus. one added bonus secret song in there somewhere, but you got to listen to the whole thing or you'll miss it. Do you have to play it like backwards and then turn the CD yeah. upside down? Uh, and then, yeah, and the CD yeah. Yes. yeah, you actually, put yeah, you put the player. CD in upside down. Um, it sounds a lot better player. if you wear a black eyeliner too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're kind of going more for that put it industrial um, <laughs> funk kind we're of thing. We're listening to a lot of Skinny Puppy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nine Inch Nails. <laughs> awesome. So how many songs ended up being on the new album? Eleven. Eleven. Oh. Yep. Eleven songs on the new album. Um, mm, seven on the re- Each one better than the than the first. Or how does that go? The last. I don't know. The last. Each song yeah, the better last than the last. Was yeah. Better than Until the, the last. First. Then Until the last. Was back tracks. The first last. My so favorite the was one three. was. <laughs> so what greater was, than or equal to the third one <laughs> what was so different about the recording of of this album than the first one the first one was done in my basement by a friend okay like we were shopping around trying to get somebody to record our music and a so bunch of things kind of fell through it was too far out right so our friend mikey haslip just finally said all right well you have practice tonight right and we we're like yep and he goes i'm coming over and recording you guys and we we're like okay and Mikey's the one who's running a lot of the shows, uh, the open mics down at the Hi-Fi. Is, is that who's doing those? Right. Yeah. yeah. yeah he's Sometimes. In, he has a lot to do with the Hi-Fi. He's helped Eddie, the owner, who's a really cool guy, get his sound system dialed in. Like, it's it's turning into one of the best spots to play in Bremerton. It's really funny. So the, the High Fidelity Lounge in Bremerton, Washington. Bremerton's, you know, uh, I don't know, an hour or two away from Seattle, depending on where you're at. And the Hi-Fi is this really small kind of hole in the wall, a very unassuming place. And the first time I was at the Hi-Fi, actually, you guys were playing an acoustic show with uh, Phasers on Kill, oh, that was fun. which was really awesome. And um, the place is bigger inside than you would be led to believe. It kind of has this weird L shape. But that place has some really, really cool... The, it actually sounds good. The acoustics are great. And that is turning into definitely one of the best spots to play. And you see a lot of uh, pretty good uh, name acts going in there. So you guys have played there quite a few times. Yep. Yeah, we played it's right in off Calo. Yeah, probably six, eight times. Get that uh, play. We play there pretty much strictly for the spinach chicken enchiladas. <laughs> they're so good. <laughs> they're yeah, yum. it's they're unbelievable. But, yeah. um, seriously eat them. No, they treat you right there, man. They 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 don't take anything away from you. They don't every show there. Well, ninety percent of the shows are free. I think unless they have a touring act come in, but uh, they treat you right. They pay you. They feed you. They give you a, a lot of beer, um, yeah. which we're all about. Yeah, well, and, getting uh, paid in beer is epic. Yeah, and super cool people. Very cool people yeah. there. Um, we've been trying not to play a lot in town lately, though. Um, well, their saturation. Yeah, just kind of. Well, the last time that I had talked to you guys we had talked about how you were playing here in town almost every week to the point where you guys felt like, Oh man, we're just, we're playing too much in this area. Yeah. And I don't know, somebody waved their fucking magic wand or something. It seems, I don't know if it's, it seems all of a sudden, but it's really not, but you guys are playing everywhere and you're playing cool shows, uh, playing with acts like hell's bells, of course, uh, MXPX. You guys have done quite a few things with them recently. Did a couple things with them. Yeah, yeah. For Agent played Orange. with Fang up in yeah Agent Orange. We played that yeah. at the Eagles in town. Uh, God, that's about a year, year, year and a half ago. Yeah. Played with Port Angeles. Yeah, that was recent. That was yeah fun. Fang in Port Angeles. That was a blast. But yeah, we've been all over, man. We we um, did a little mini tour. Uh, went down to Longview, Chandler. wrote the. Columbia to Kennewick. Yeah, yeah that was a lot of fun. Spokane, yep. Yeah. And uh, you guys got down Wenatchee. to Oregon a while ago. Wenatchee. Astoria, yeah. Yeah, yep. we did play in Oregon. I forgot yeah. about Skate that. Park. Astoria, yeah. where yeah. they yep. film the Goonies. Yep, yep. yep. Just Just south Astoria. Of Do not try to yep. go to the Goonies house, though. There is signs that say you will be arrested if you even look at it funny. So you went then, is what you're saying. I just looked at it from afar. Yeah. I couldn't get arrested before the show. That would have been bad <laughs> karma. But if you are going to get arrested, that's kind of a cool way to do it. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. They don't offer any like free fucking pirate ship rides or anything down there? No. Nope. The anyway. story is kind of weird place, man. Um, there was a lot of fights. Was there? Like, I don't know. Did you guys go to the bar after we got, <laughs> after the show that we played, we went to go with some of the locals to a bar. We got to the bar. And it was closed. And they're like, there was a fight here. You have to go to this bar. 
was like, okay. So we walked down the street to the other bar, and they were like, there was a huge fight here. You have to go to this bar. I was like, what the? F-? It was like the Oyster Fest or Shrimp and oh, yeah, yeah, something yeah, festival. The, yeah, the, and they're like, yeah, the all the crab, old crab people fight board, the though. new people. It's like, That's just what they <laughs> oh, do yeah. at the Oyster Fest. So they like, moved yeah. your show location to a different spot? No. no, no, no. We played at a skate park. It was oh, after okay. the show when we were trying to find somewhere to drink that we were being told you can't go there because we ended up drinking in a ice cream parlor. Yeah. Well, why not? Beer. Yeah. That's awesome. It was pretty decent. Ice cream social. Because yeah. yeah. oysters get people crazy. I don't know. The, the actual ice cream bar was closed down, but they just served beers. But you had to sit and look at all the ice cream. It was really <laughs> awkward. <laughs> you couldn't even order the ice cream? No. Oh, that's crazy. So what are some of the, the favorite shows you guys have played recently? Anything stand out in your mind? Uh, uh, that Fang show was Fang a show lot was, of fun yeah, up in Port really Angeles. Uh, I kind of kind of have um, – that's the first show that we've actually asked to get on in a long time. It was just kind of an offhanded thing because usually we get asked to play shows and a buddy had said asked if uh, – anybody would be interested in watching Fang in Port Angeles. And I said, we would like to play with them and they hooked us up. So pretty cool. Um, super nice guys. That was a good show. Uh, the tour was kind of a whirlwind. There was a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff we probably shouldn't have been doing on that tour. So it's a little hazy, but we are having fun. Yeah. It came out good. Uh, the acid teeth guys love us. I know that, but yeah. And the know nothings. Yeah. We told, we, uh, Tully from the Know Nothings Park next to our, v, our our V one night, and uh, we were all <laughs> staying up late. Would uh, we stay up till about three thirty, four o'clock in the morning? Yeah, that was the hooting normal. and hollering, and then we got out and stuck probably twenty stickers all over his van. He wasn't very happy. He wasn't happy, <laughs> but you know, I don't think he's ever happy. He's happy, just not with stickers stuck everywhere in his van. But he yeah. missed two that we found the next day again. It's like, ha ha. Well, you were just covering up defects in the paint, right? Yeah, making yeah, them yeah. too. Yeah. 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 yeah, soundproofing. <laughs> <laughs> so the RV, is that the tour bus? Yeah, the yeah. RV it was kind of bought like for Port my Angeles. family and for the, yeah, Port Angeles. Uh, it, w- it was bought for both. For yes. the band and for my family. Yeah, we'll tour around a little bit and, uh, Depends on where we go. We brought it down to Longview a couple times on the tour, Port Angeles. Depends on how far we're going, I guess, if mm-hmm. we're staying the night. We are going to go down to, uh, where's that at? The Kelso. Tattoo? Kelso. Yeah, we're going to go play a tattoo convention uh, at the end of this month. Next? 26th, 27th. 26th, 27th. There you go. Now. Yeah, Thunder Mountain Today. Tattoo Expo. We're playing Friday and Saturday wow. night. Uh, we're the only band playing. I believe there's one other artist. Yeah, I think it's a, a rap artist. I'm not sure. I haven't heard him yet. Should be pretty cool, though. A tattoo Dude. convention. That sounds like an awesome show. Yeah. Are you going to get tattoos? I'm hoping Maybe. I can weasel in on some free tattoos after being so fucking awesome that night. <laughs> That's my plan. <laughs> He's already got this well thought yeah. out. He's like, yeah. hey, if you guys fuck this up for me, somebody's out of the band. <laughs> nah. No, I, I, I'm waiting for him to throw me out, actually. Yeah. Be a lot easier that way. It would be. Yeah. Nobody else knows all the words. That's the problem. I don't know them either half the time. <laughs> you could have Josh Kennedy sing all the words there for you. you. Uh, there, there you go. There you go. Let's do that. I've seen those videos. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when he's standing up, he sounds pretty good. Yeah. He actually sang on our um, on the album. On the album. He oh, did no some kidding. backing on vocals monkeys. on the song Monkeys. Yep. Yep. The deep growls in the background. That's yep. him. <laughs> no, we cut Pablo out on that one. Yeah, why? I'm just kidding. No, he was no. on there. The... Not on purpose. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we've played a few shows where we've showed up and they didn't have enough inputs for all the vocals or something yeah. like that. And sure. Or you, you know, show up to somebody in the studio and the inputs and don't work and the mics don't work and the chords <laughs> yeah. don't work. I mean. <laughs> Any number of things can happen. It's rarely the fault of the person running the production, though. I just want to be very clear about that. Yeah, it's it's usually, usually somebody else's fault. It's usually my fault. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> he showed up. Apologize. There's a vortex in every building, and yeah. it's the duty of said sound person to find out where the vortex is. And then I'll sit there. And then put Shane there. <laughs> well, it's just Sometimes. Pablo. Sometimes. for somebody like, like you with this show, when things start going wrong like that, and you have to kick the intern out of the way and do it yourself, you know, yeah. I mean, that impresses yeah. us, but... 
kind of disgusts me in your intern, but yeah, you know. yeah. Well, since I am my own intern, I guess that's uh, you disgust me. It's a yeah. twofer. <laughs> now you sound like my wife. It's a oh, strange yeah, sorry. Dichotomy. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So what's um what's coming down the pike for you guys? You got some other cool stuff besides the tattoo stuff going on. What do we got going We've on? We've been trying to slow down. Yeah. We, we played a lot in the past, like, nine months. Stuff. Yeah, we're working on a bunch of new songs, which is really cool. Yeah. And back so into then there's phase. a new album in the works in, say, five years? <laughs> Probably about It'll that. be yeah. finished yeah. in one year, but it'll probably be out in four. EP. <laughs> um, no, I think we probably got we probably got six, seven new songs uh, that we've been either working on or have oh, completed. An album by the time we do it here in a couple months. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so when I talked to you guys the first time and was asking you how your what is now your current album differed from the EP, and you'd mentioned the fact that you had taken a lot longer to write these songs and that you'd spent more time kind of on the composition side of things. So taking that concept into these songs that you guys have now, are you comfortable with where you're at as writers or are you trying different things still? Not as much. We try They're different things, out but natural. most of the times the songs that we really like come together really fast and really easy. Yeah. They just kind of like, we all get stoked and you look around and you see that same like wide eye and a smile on everybody's face like, fuck yeah, that's rad. Let's keep that. Let's do that. And then we forget about it by next practice is the that's, problem half the time. We need that's it. the biggest problem. We don't <laughs> to come over here and practice because you got all this stuff. Sure. Yeah. And we can totally um, just come over and practice here. You know, no, man, we've, some stuff. we've got songs that we've been working on for months. And we just don't have the time to always practice it every week. Yeah. There, well, there's been a lot of stuff going on. I mean, Shane's, Shane's son happened. graduated last last uh, uh, June and he's been very busy and. Pablo's got a little one and just Goes life, the, you know. The beach every year. Evan's not that little. He's yeah, not. yeah. Evan's a little <laughs> bit bigger. He's just slender. Yeah. 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 He doesn't listen, though. He's a very tall four year old. He doesn't mm-hmm. listen at all. He uh, listens a little bit, but only when it suits him. So when you guys are writing, I mean, does the writing process start with the practice and somebody jamming out and then you guys feed off that? Or is somebody bring like a lick to the table and say, hey, check out this, this fucking piece that I've been working on? How does Both. the process go for you guys? Sean usually shows up and says, play this or you're all out of the band. Oh. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> no, people don't it listen. I get really angry, and then I just leave. No, um, I no. mean, a lot of the songs that we write do come together like that. Somebody will, like, last practice, Pablo just started playing something on the bass while we were all kind of tuning our stuff and setting up, and it was like, that's kind of cool. So Shane jumped in, and Dale started hitting the drums, and I just started laughing. Kind of yeah, laughing <laughs> at us. Yeah, no, I started singing something and it just kind of clicked. It's it was pretty cool, but um, I mean, yeah, every now and again we'll have some kind of a riff, but it's when it does come to that, we try not to take it any further than that riff mm-hmm. to see what comes of it. If you listen to uh, the new album, the song Karma, on that it starts off really slow and really kind of this dark, gloomy, almost a Sabbathy yeah, sound, Sabbath-y. and I and, and I had written Still that rock. riff in my head. Then transferred it over to the guitar and uh, just went to see where it, you know, brought it to these guys to see where it'd go. And it went a totally different direction than I thought it would. It just goes from zero to holy shit, half a second flat. But I mean, it's it's kind of cool to see that with other people's input. I don't like to try to sit down and write a whole song myself. Um, sometimes it happens, but with all of us so it's just usually just an idea something that's cool and if everybody digs it then we just jam on it for a while and See hope we don't forget it. it yeah yeah how is the reception to the new album been um a lot of people love it yeah a lot of people love it i haven't heard really i haven't heard anybody that doesn't like it um i stopped talking to people so i don't know yeah yeah shane's like <laughs> facebook he's off facebook his phone doesn't get texts a real pain in the ass but That's um nice. no nah, man here, yeah no people really <laughs> seem to like it a lot um everybody that has it says it's one of the mainstays in their uh cd player or they listen to it online or whatever um unfortunately we're all kind of uh 
little bit computer illiterate, so it's hard for us to get it onto SoundClouds or mm. Apple Tunes, iTunes, whatever. And it's yeah, all on Reverb I, Nation, though. It is on Reverb Nation. We do have a page, Reverb Nation, uh, the Fibs page. Of course, there are and a I few Fibs fans out, out of there. My Google yeah, account. so it's funny you mention that. I was um, just kind of going through before you guys came over, and I was uh, I was kind of cyber stalking you to see if there was anything new that I wanted to just. Oh my god, I had no clue what was going on with you guys. And then I see these like, oh, the Fibs playing New Orleans. And I'm like, what the fuck? Uh-huh. When when are you guys playing New Orleans? And, and and then I see like Fibs played all these shows in Tennessee, and I'm like, holy shit! I mean, and then We're I'm blown like, up, oh <laughs> wait a second, this is a a three piece bluegrass band with like yep. three eighty year old dudes or you know whatever. Yeah. Well, they actually there was just a show. Somebody sent me a, a flyer from it uh, at my work, and they a Fibs band played at El Corazon. But a kind of a funny story on that. We got booked. What was that joint called over in Seattle? We got booked at um, Fun House. Oh, the Fun the House. Fun yeah. House. Yeah. So we got booked to play the Fun House, right and uh, we went over there. It was supposed to be five bands. We were to play third, and the guy that set the show up came up and said, "The first band's not showing up. The second band's not showing up. Can you guys play first? And we said, "No problem, man." So we set up and we did our thing, and we were. Getting a lot of weird looks, but people liked it. And uh, there was a punk rock show going on next door, and a lot of the people were wandering over from there, and we got a good response from them. And we broke down our gear after the set and packed it all outside. And by the time we were all packed out, the next band started, and it was this really kind of a... Psychedelic, bluesy... Psychedelic space rock kind of thing. And (laughs) we started listening to that and figured out they hired the wrong fibs oh shit. this other There's band a, sounded texas. just like this other fibs from texas i believe yeah, yeah it was pretty funny but uh they actually asked us to come back and play another show and i i and rather than agreeing i googled i searched these other bands and it was the same deal i wrote back to the guy i said you got the wrong fibs man and i sent him our link and he hasn't gotten back to us. So. <laughs> That's really funny. There was a, <laughs> there was a time um, years and years and years ago, getting back to the old high school days, when it was before it was J. A. Michaels, it was uh, Richard's Castaways East, and it was down on Perry Avenue. And when I was playing in Disembodied, we sh- we were asked to play on this whatever random night, and we showed up there, and that was a death metal band, and everybody in the place was cowboys. <laughs> well, they had booked us on country night, and he, so and we went on first. We cleared that fucking place. I mean, <laughs> I mean you're it was, welcome, guys. Yeah, it's, thank you. We'll be back next week, you know. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was a matter of minutes. As soon as we turned on the amps and started doing sound check, we just got the dirtiest looks. And then, um, as soon as we played that first song, and then we basically played seven songs to a the sound guy and the bartender and I think my parents. <laughs> yeah. But that was awesome. At least yeah. they stayed. Yeah. They didn't want to, but I think they, <laughs> I think they felt guilty Yeah, because well, there was, there was nobody in there to have to explain who they were. I mean, right. they just sat there and said, Oh yeah. My kid's going to hell. That's cool. <laughs> That's funny shit, man. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's strange. Uh, you know, when you look at all the bands out there and uh, that have the similar names and I guess, you never think about it, but who really does research on their names anymore? Like, am I going to Google my band name and see if anybody else has it? And if they do have it, is it a big deal? Are we going to get into licensing issues or are we going to send some mafia hitman over and say, you're no longer the fibs? Yeah. I think whichever one starts making money first. Gets yeah. They're the ones who usually get. Here's a thousand bucks for, uh, you know, <laughs> Well, yeah, there's, one, there's already been a Fibs that had an album out. There's a, there's like a one one band called yeah, like Fibs that's signed, Australia. and I don't know what the hell they. I I don't know if that's the space rock. And then there's another band called the Fibs with two Bs and a Z, and they're like an R and B group. Yeah. I mean, but you know, we we thought we'd play one show and everybody would hate us, and we'd never play again. We'd just hide in the garage and play. <laughs> but all of a sudden we're coming up on like 200 shows in the last not even four years Man. yet. So are you are you actually tallying your shows? Or you... uh, we've got a list. I got them all we haven't down, erased. Yeah. I, I got to imagine. I mean, we hit the 100 mark quite a while ago, so we're well above that. So we're coming somewhere toward 200. But I mean, it just makes our heads feel bigger. Yeah. You know, but what keeps you going? 
Uh, Viagra. Yeah. Viagra and uh, constant <laughs> masturbation. <laughs> um, I don't know, man. I, we're just friends having fun, and you know, sometimes it, sometimes it seems like it'd be nice to just stay home and mm-hmm. not do it, but you kind of push through because when you do go play the shows. Nine out of ten shows, you're just having the best time no, of your life, and then so the tenth show, you're pissed off and angry, but you actually play better. <laughs> yeah. So, I, um, it, it's just a lot of fun. I mean, it, it, the I think the hardest part of doing this is loading in. Oh God, I hate that. <laughs> you know, actually, while we're talking about that, if anybody <laughs> is over the age of twenty one and doesn't drink, they can. You. you can have all the fucking money from the show. We need you to haul all our gear in, set it up, and haul it all back out. That's all you got to do. And then drive us home. And drive us home, yeah. And you can have all the money. Like 80 bucks. Yeah. A night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's pretty Technically, good, right? it's only like 20 minutes worth of work and then 20 minutes worth of work. And then waiting around for yeah. So I mean, it's, it's Hopefully about... you're not closing the show down. Well, yeah, that's downtime. <laughs> you got to bring a book or something. Yeah, a book. A Kindle. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah. Is that one of those things with words in it? I hope Sometimes not. some of them have pictures. God, it makes way too many thinkings. <laughs> yeah, the the load in load out is brutal, especially for drummers. Yeah, all that ugh, fucking drummers. Yeah, we all their shit just gets in the way. Or... Yeah, yeah. You know, if I ever was to, if this ever ended and I was ever in another band, I would just be the singer. Yeah, and I'd carry my microphone. I'd get one of them gold fucking microphones like you got right there, and I'd carry that in. Yeah, and a huge ego, and that's it. I wouldn't even bring in a fucking mic stand. I do not need that. Yeah. Yep. Maybe I'd get one of those Garth Brooks ones where it just goes like on your head. Madonna just the headset. Head. <laughs> yeah, that'd be pretty dope. But there was a band that that we played with, and they were called Killing Faith, and I think they're still around. They were really good. The singer had, we called it the Madonna mic. And so he played his guitar, and then he sang through the Madonna mic, but he had this really awesome, not quite death metal, not quite thrash scream, and he kind of looked like a vampire. And it was really crazy to see him with the Madonna mic, but it worked. What's the Madonna mic? It's, headset. it's a headset mic with just oh, the, little, the little tiny, I got you, I got the you. Little okay. tiny boom. You could barely okay. see the boom. So it was like he had the big thing on his head, but then the bloop. The little mic was really funny. Okay, okay, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't look right, but it sounded awesome. Worked all right at farm. Yeah, and then all the sound guys are like, "Fuck, I got to use your wireless mic." Are you kidding me? Because they hate that. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, what was that thing? I saw a picture. This is totally off topic, but it just popped into my head just now. There was a little project that I saw you doing a picture on the Book of Faces that you and uh, Mike Herrera and some other dudes were sitting around like one microphone, and you were like. Doing some weird obscure project. What Nobody was else, that? just him and Michael Herrera. It was, yeah, just us. Um, and I, 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 else was I in cropped the these guys out. Were no. you in there? No, no one else was there. Yeah, just I them don't, two. I <laughs> yeah, don't. we were just cuddling um, around a microphone. No, uh, we went to open mic. Okay. Uh, after practice one night, and Mikey Haslip wanted us to do a gang vocal on one of the weirdos songs that they're putting on their next album. Okay. And uh, one of the fibs. Yeah, he wanted the fibs. Shane didn't show up because he was mad at us again. Um, yeah. But no, we just did it in my garage. Yeah, Mikey place. brought over the sheet, and, and it happened that uh, uh, Mike Carrera was at the the, sh- the, the show. open mic, and okay. I kind of just um, forced myself upon him. To yeah, well, he was submit. standing there. Yeah, no, he's, a, he's actually <laughs> a really nice guy, man. Uh, Mikey was standing there talking to me about it, and I said, well, he's coming with, and he goes, okay. So he came along, and uh, one of his buddies came with, Johnny, who actually has uh, turned out to be a really good friend of mine. Uh, but, yeah, just kind of one of those things that just happened right. And, uh, yeah, it was fun. We sang, I think it was four lines, over and over and over, yeah. and just kept stacking vocals. So uh, I think there has to be about 50 people singing in there, but really it was five of us, five of us six yeah. of us, five of us. Yeah. So it was fun though, man. Um, been getting to do a lot of cool stuff. Uh, what about us uh, teaming up with uh, Get Your Ass to Mars? Yeah, that's I'll right. Actually, up. we got a cool thing coming up. Uh, our friends, Get Your Ass to Mars. Uh, three of the guys were in Steelscape. Uh, they are doing. Uh, it's it's more of a 
kind of a, a cosmic rock, rocky. yeah it's a cool new band that they've got uh they've got i guess they've been together for a year and a half or now. so they don't play a lot but uh all phenomenal musicians and we're gonna do a show the day after thanksgiving at the black Manette friday Saloon. yep crack friday <laughs> and uh fibs are gonna open we're gonna do a full plugged in set and then get your ass to mars is gonna play their full plugged in set and they're all instrumental you got to come to this you'd love them these guys are they're phenomenal Dude, they're yeah. so fun to watch man. yeah the melodies it's crazy just but, uh, amazing after amazing they do music. their set uh i'm gonna hop up and sing i think four songs with them do some cover songs and these guys are gonna kind of rotate in and then we're gonna break it all down and probably do 30 40 minutes of acoustic covers uh cover songs all together so we'll have we're gonna have an eight piece band up there it's like a we are the world yeah yeah (laughs) mug runchers on mars that's what we call it so yeah yeah that sounds awesome yes there is a sticker (laughs) there is stickers there's a few of them so dale speaking of weirdos did you are you playing with them or what band did i hear that you were going to start playing with again not the weirdos it's the know nothings the know nothings awesome And Shane, are you still doing dielectric? Yeah. Yeah. So Pablo, or what else are you doing? Uh still uh Rory okay. Rory okay. He's actually been on a hiatus for a while and we've been practicing quite a bit lately. And uh gosh, it's almost been ten years since we first started that band with the two buddies. Yeah. Before me and John took over. About Was it a hostile takeover? <laughs> Very hostile. Yeah. Well John's mm-hmm. on the couch. So your guys' other projects, are are these just kind of uh, back burner projects, or are you guys taking a little bit of a breather from Fibs? It seems like you guys are still going full force. We are. Yeah. No, we are. We just fit it in. You know, it's it, it's kind of cool. Um, first come, first serve, you know. Well, Dielectric, Dielectric's been around for a little longer than the yeah. Fibs, and, and they don't play Actually, with we three sold times Shane. a year. Yeah, we usually play like three times a year, yeah. all in a period of like two months. Then we just take a break for a long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Rory OK had a break uh, for a little while, and they're getting back into show mode. And then with the No Nothings, the one thing with the No Nothings is they've, they've been, been, been a, a three piece forever. Mm-hmm. And Dale's the fourth. And if for some yeah, reason there, there was a conflict and we shows. got a really cool offer, then yep. you know what I mean. It it, it should jive, but uh, I mean why you want to play the drums because we're looking for a new drummer uh, i only play skin flute damn it oh perfect i need a skin flute You're player <laughs> dale switch him seats <laughs> nice. but, no it arena. should all jive and i mean I, I i do a little bit of uh solo stuff now and again but mm-hmm. i'm more into Very like rare. i've been drinking a lot um yeah, he's into the drinking been drinking a lot how's yeah. that going for you not good yeah uh but yeah doing a lot of drinking golfing you know, punk rock golfing, stuff like that. Um, punk rock yeah. golfing, is that like Grand Theft Auto style golfing? No, where it's just like, up hookers it's actually clubs? really bad. I put on my beer socks and my black dicky shorts, and I got this sweet ass, horribly ugly Seahawks golf shirt, like actual silky golf shirt that I wear. Yeah. And I go out to the golf clubs and I fucking drive my ball about 100 yards further than the old guys, and they get pissed off because I out golf them. And, he just swears the whole time. Oh God, yeah. I haven't I haven't thrown any clubs lately, but um, no, nah, it's a lot of fun, man. I mean, everybody's we kind of all got our own thing. Um, but I'd rather be working. You know, I like to go to work. Yeah, yeah, it's a good hobby of mine. Like to go work for the old for the man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for the government. Nothing better than working. It's your favorite thing to do next to not working. Yeah, that's right. It's my second favorite thing to do next to not working and drinking beer. Yeah, I need to chill on that. But hey, you know, whatever. Yeah. Come say, come saw. So this uh, this um, holiday season, are you guys going to do some sweet like New Year shows, Halloween shows, anything like that? Oh, we got a house party. We got a house party around yeah. Christmas, yeah. Oh, that's right. 23rd. Like a, somebody's house or something? Yeah, that's what a housewarming yeah. is. It's yeah. a somebody's house? Yeah, that'd be a warming <laughs> of a somebody's house. Somebody's house. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, it's for not a good say. friend of well, ours. Uh, or is birthday. it that you're going to light somebody's house on fire and then you're going to play that show? No. That's hard to do because our gear's heavy and you can't light yeah. it on fire yeah. and get your gear out safely. No, so that's always a bad idea. We'd just be burning ourselves. <laughs> that's actually, I didn't even think about that, but the Thunder Mountain Tattoo Expo, that's the weekend Halloween. before Halloween two weeks from and now. that actually has costume contests two weekends from now both nights hot chick contests so but we committed I'm to hoping that I can get there for that, that. I think I could win it 
Um, and that then, would just be so unfair for everybody. Oh, though. dude, man boobs. But uh, and then the the next show we have is the day after Thanksgiving that we're playing in town, and uh, then we're playing um the Christmas housewarming party. And actually, uh, Dan at Airport Tavern wants us to play with a ba- it's a rancid cover band. It's supposed to be really good. I forgot to really? tell you guys that, but you guys are in, right? What day? I don't what fucking know, man. All right. Sure. Why not? Yeah, they're in. As See? As booking shows. Booking Doing st- stuff. We're, you're booking shows Doing right things. here. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Remotely booking yep. shows. Yeah. He books a show and then forgets to tell us about him sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> well, I had to call him this morning and remind him that uh, <laughs> we're coming here. We were committed to it. Yeah. Yeah. You I'm didn't want to come in, but it was just like, oh, fuck. We said we'd do it. No, I really, no, I like doing this shit. Was. I'm just bad, man. I can't remember. Yeah. I didn't I, write it down. I'm one of those guys that can't see it yeah, if it's right in front of my face. But, but I don't, I don't it don't matter. Well, he has a job. Yourself. He's his own boss. You don't have an actual job? I don't have to report to him. He works just for himself doing oh. things. I build house and stuff. You know? He's got money in the bank. I don't have, like, a boss. Right. The boss is whoever wants to check. Yeah. Or a treehouse yeah, built. Or a playhouse right. built. Or a TARDIS okay. built. So you work when you want to work. Yeah, Pablo's built two TARDISes. <laughs> <laughs> he has. He did. No shit. Yeah. Yeah. Both outhouses. Yeah. They look pretty badass. Really? That's cool. Did you actually build that house that look like TARDISes? Yeah. yeah. Well, he has two honey buckets out of Honey bucket uh, covers. Five acres. <laughs> they have sort of a business where they train dogs. Yeah. And so there's people come out in the lot. So they have two honey buckets on their property. And he doesn't. He thought, how cool would it be to actually build a TARDIS to put over the honey bucket? Yeah. Have you ever shit in a in time the machine? So we call it a turdus, actually. <laughs> a turdus. That's yeah, fucking the genius. Turdus. Yeah. Yeah. I've never so been able to shit in a time machine. What's it like? Um. It's kind of painful. I mean, yeah, sometimes after I shit in time machines, I get blood on my toilet paper. <laughs> I got the sploop. You know what I'm talking about? You sploop, did. sperm, blood, and poop. <laughs> Man, that's, yeah. that's a killer combo. Isn't that? Yeah, I got the sploop. <laughs> what are you talking about? This is going to get so many hits up until minute 24. <laughs> Never wash Sean's laundry. Yeah, sorry about that. Don't touch it. Just sorry, it ladies. I don't really have the sploop. Oh, man. You made it up. So bringing this back home <laughs> to uh, uh, when I was uh, cyber stalking you guys, I was looking at, because I'd asked you a while ago how the reception was to your, your newest album, and I saw a lot of comments about Into the Night, which I've been very vocal about that being a, uh, one of my favorite songs of all time. That one seems to get a lot of good reception. Have you guys been playing that one much live at all? Uh, we play that Quite one a lot. Frequently. Yeah. Not every yeah. time. Nine out of ten shows. Yeah. It does. It's got a really good message behind it, and it's fun to play. You get yeah. into it. Well, it's, yeah. a, it's a sad song. I mean, but it's, it's got a personal you know, right. yeah. story behind it yeah. for, for those people you know? that may or may not know the people that you know and things like that. But I think it's one of those. It's It's... It's a song about loss sure. and appreciation and love, but uh, I think anybody that listens to it can understand it mm-hmm. in their own way because everybody's loved somebody, everybody's lost somebody, everybody's got that friend that just passed right. that fast yeah, and nobody absolutely. expected Quite it. Quite a few and, friends. Uh, yeah, you know, it's it's part of life and it's a shitty thing and... uh well, plus there's OOs in it, and everybody loves. Yeah, O-O's everybody and likes songs. to oh, they can sing that. But uh, no, that's a great song, man. And that was probably the the really thank you. That's the coolest compliment I think that I have gotten since we've done this is you saying that that is one of your favorite songs. You wrote that to me, and you said that not just a fib song, but songs you've ever heard out right. of every band, and that's cool, man. Thank yeah, no, you. I definitely thank wasn't you. blowing smoke about that. It's it's. It hit me on a personal level, of course, because you know I, I interpreted it my way, um, and uh, and it sounds different than than the average fib song. It's a little more uh, melodic and almost metal sounding, um, yeah. kind of kind of like an anthem almost, really. Yeah. Um. So 
have you guys, I mean, you've incorporated that into the set list a little more. I've never had the opportunity to see that when you, I've seen you guys live. I haven't heard that one live yet. Oh, shit. Um, but you can say um, something next show you come to. So, yeah, ne- next time I expect a dedication. No, no mm-hmm. pressure. Mm-hmm. No worries. Um, but uh, so what's your what's your typical set list consist of now? I mean, are you playing a lot of these new songs? Or are you mixing it up yeah, every uh, time? We don't write set lists. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I just what, play what. When we first started, he had a printout. Oh, it was cool. Like a flyer. Yeah, yeah. Then it, it was then awesome. Then it graduated to the handwritten, and now it's now it's yeah, nothing. Yeah, every time I'd make a set list, no I'd think of it. for the fans. I'd take a picture, say, like, take a picture of Rambo and put it behind there. Or if we were playing, like, uh, a birthday party, it'd be a birthday cake with somebody jumping out of it or something. And then I just kind of got to the point where it's like, ah, oh, fuck it, man, I'm too lazy. So we've got kind of a group of songs that we can throw together at any time that flow and uh I kind of play it in sets of threes almost like three songs that kind yeah. of yeah well, we've done the uh you know the bridge city thing and a lot of times we'll play that block of songs mm-hmm. we'll get it going right to them and then we'll actually have another bridge city set that we're kind of working on if we, if we go do that again if we want to oh yeah well let's talk about that for a quick second as a tangent so the the bridge city sessions uh, out of tacoma um, no, Portland. Portland. Oh, it's Portland. Yeah, oh, it my is. bad. Mm-hmm. Um, so, tell me how that experience was for you guys. That was awesome. Yeah, it was. It was, it was different. really cool. It was um, different, challenging, but, awesome. but it turned out well. So, the to describe it for people, it's basically like a like a live recording Audio with video. And video. Yeah. So yeah, it's like a video cameras, yeah. It's like the Metallica jamming version of one. <laughs> it's you know for for us it was a little bit the reason that it was a little bit weird was because when we did it we had to use headphones so the drums were set up in the same room that we were all standing so if your headphones fell off all you could hear was drums right couldn't hear anybody singing you, the guitars and the the they have, all the amps were in the other room everything all was going isolated. back through yeah and and it was a little bit odd it was kind of weird but uh Soon after we did ours, and I mean, it still it still came out good, and the, and these guys are awesome. But uh, the cool thing, and why we really we would do it again either way, but why we're really excited to try to get back down there probably in the spring, we're hoping, uh, is now you don't no have headphones. to have the headphones. It's all set up, and it's just a real neat thing, man. And these guys are doing some really big stuff. Besides that, they're. I uh, just saw that they had the bomb pops oh, down nice. there warming up in their space cool. and, you know, right. just doing all kinds they of stuff. They come through there. Yeah, yeah. Yep. They get a bunch of cool people in there. Yeah, mm-hmm. and the, the production is really cool. On, off, like, I really the, like The physical that. side of it, the videos, uh, is really cool. I liked seeing uh, Dale jamming on those drums with his amorphous T-shirt. Yeah. Uh, there's a blast from the past. I fucking love that band. Oh, they're still yeah. around kicking, oh, touring. Oh, man. But I saw I saw Tales them. Tales from the Thousand Lakes is like, one of my favorites. Yeah. That's super They're awesome. They're my favorite metal band by yeah. far. Yeah. You guys should do some death metal covers from the Fibs. We should. That'd be awesome. Yeah. We've only ever played we'll do Necro by the Dead Clerics. <laughs> Just... Yeah, at a wedding. We had a we played a cover. We did, at a we wedding. played well, we've kinda of played a few covers on a fuck around, oh, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, we'll be like warm enough. You get that one jack out. Play some Skinner. <laughs> fuck, all right, you know, but we did. We played uh, Linoleum by No Effects. We played, we played, yeah. Oh, yeah. As a yeah. Friend, some friends of ours got married, and that's what they wanted as their wedding song. Twisted Twist Sister song is played to ourselves. At the end. <laughs> yeah. No, but Bridge City, man, if we, it, we will do it again, and it's really cool. And I mean, if you're in a band or you're a solo artist, I would. I'd do it in a second if we go play back down there. But I, I'm, I'm thinking maybe sometime towards spring when it starts getting. Nice again. Would be nice to go back down there. It's kind of cool too. You can go down and hang out at the McMinimans and oh yeah, you know, drink beer and have yeah. fun. Or not. Next time we go, we probably shouldn't drink so much beer the night before though. Oh, but we hey, were you all know. hung over. Beer that night, the night after. Yeah. Well, yeah, we'll just limit ourselves. Just not a lot, but some the night. I won't drink yeah. any. Speaking of beers, you want to grab me a beer, Evan? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. This is a perfect time. So. Um, I think we're going to get ready to uh, wind down this portion of the show and get ready to have you guys get set up. And then we'll do our own Misery Point radio session with the Fibs and for some awesome live stuff coming up next. So hang tight. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Sweet. And we're back with the Fibs getting ready to give us a super fucking epic acoustic performance once again. Guys, what are you going to do for us? Songs. 
We're gonna do three songs. Three songs. We'll we're gonna play Ferris Wheel. That's the first song we're gonna play. Then we're gonna play Into the Night, which is the second song. We're for gonna especially play. for you. Thank you. And then we're gonna play uh, a newer song called Stay. Stay. This will nice. actually be our uh, first recording of it. Oh, then, awesome! The third song. Going in dry. Yeah, third song. Yeah, you got to. Yeah, That's better, more feeling. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we're just gonna <laughs> spit on it. Roll. <laughs> dry. Uh, all right. Anytime you're ready, guys. So this next one is, of course, a personal favorite of mine. This is Into the Night.
sit and wait and it won't help you realize in the end when we are gone only memories of the nothing that's become but I'm not running to the light and I can only hope that you'll follow me into the night Into the night I've got friends who are six feet underground Seen their ashes being spread out all around I never thought that it would in that way Although you lost the battle, we miss you every day But I'm not running to the light I can only hope that you'll follow me into the night So before we get into this last song, guys, why don't you uh, tell all the peeps out there where they can find you on all your social media stuffs? You can find us on the internet. You can find us at the Manette Saloon in Bremerton. <laughs> uh, on Wednesdays usually. Find us YouTube. on uh, find us on YouTube. Find us on Facebook. Uh, sessions. Bridge City Sessions. Uh, got a Reverb Nation. Page. SoundCloud Reverb Nation. Fibs from Bremerton. Yeah, we got all kinds of shit. Uh, look for us, and we're probably there. Awesome. Uh, I really want to thank you guys for coming out on the show once more and hanging out here on Misery Point Radio. And why don't you take us out with one more song? Tell us what you're doing. It's a new song. Uh, newer song. The song is, uh, it's like a love song. So we wrote it about you. It's called Stay. Oh.
Right.